Hey everybody, Grim Green, GrimGreen.com back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. I had a news item that I really wanted to touch on outside of the vlog just because it's been gaining so much traction and so much mainstream media attention. And what we're going to be talking about today is wet lung. So the story goes like this, a mildly asthmatic 18-year-old restaurant hostess in Pennsylvania went to the hospital with symptoms that included a uh, coughing, chest pain, shortness of breath. The doctors had put her on antibiotics, but her condition didn't get any better. And she developed a type of lung inflammation called hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which I had to do some Google foo on. Turns out it's an allergy. It's a hypersensitivity to organic dusts. Dusts, rural Pennsylvania, yeah. And then eventually the doctors diagnosed her with acute respiratory distress syndrome, which in the medical community is often referred to as ARDS. That's the official name for it. But the name they give it in this article is called wet lung. And the interesting thing to me is you can easily, easily Google the term wet lung. And what it brings up is nothing but references to this particular case. And the term wet lung is a real buzzwordy sounding word, isn't it? It. It's a lot easier to, to get wet lung out there, to have people associating the term wet lung with vaping than it is ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. I do also quickly want to point out that no, I am not a scientist or a doctor. So this poor girl gets diagnosed with acute respiratory distress syndrome caused by hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is again an allergy. It's a hypersensitivity to organic dust. But they also felt the need in this article to sort of shoehorn in the fact that she had been experimenting with vaping. They say she was vaping three weeks prior to this incident, and the last time she had vaped was two or three days before she was admitted to the hospital. And another doctor, Dr. Len Horowitz, a pulmonary specialist at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City, who was not directly involved with this patient at all, had to say, chemicals such as glycerin or propylene glycol have been questioned for some time as to their safety and may have played a role here. And now what I find most fascinating about that statement is Propylene glycol has been used for years and years and years and years and years and years, not just as a GRAS generally recognized as safe food additive, but also in an aerosolized form. Every concert or show or stage production that anyone has ever been to where they utilize stage fog Everyone in that auditorium is breathing in propylene glycol. And remember that this all started with hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is an allergy. So there is a good chance that this unnamed 18-year-old mystery waitress hostess from Pennsylvania did have maybe an allergy to propylene glycol. That is a very real thing that exists. Some more traditional symptoms of a propylene glycol allergy are things like itchy, red, tender skin, you have a dry scalp, you have the possibility of getting rash on your head or on your ears. If someone had a propylene glycol sensitivity or allergy, they would be very, very, very well aware of it before they started vaping. Propylene glycol is used in multiple applications across many, many different industries, including pharmaceuticals, toothpaste, shampoo. Propylene glycol is kind of everywhere, and it's generally recognized as safe by the FDA. So if someone had a sensitivity or even a full-on outright allergy to propylene glycol, they would know it far, far beforehand, before vaping. And there are a lot of vapors that I have talked to that have to use 100% VG or glycerin juice because they do have that PG sort of sensitivity. And the authors do say in this article that this is the first case of its kind of anything like this resulting from an e-cigarette use. So I have to kind of wonder, are we just gonna go with Occam's razor here where the simplest solution might be the correct one? Doctors blaming vaping for this poor girl's condition without backing up anything they're saying with any sort of evidence 
or research or references or links to studies or anything is just, to me, in my opinion, incredibly irresponsible and incredibly misrepresenting the truth of what's actually going on here. I don't feel like, in the same breath, a doctor should be able to say, well, we don't know the long-term side effects of vaping. Vaping hasn't been studied. We haven't studied the long-term vaping side effects, but this is definitely because of vaping. We might not know the long-term effects of it, but we know for sure in this case, it's absolutely because of vaping. And all this article did was use this poor girl's condition as a platform for completely slandering vaping. And they end this article with a statement that has nothing to do with the original headline. It has nothing to do with this poor girl. It has nothing to do with the possibility of having an allergic reaction to propylene glycol. And the same doctor Dr. Len Horvitz, who previously had the statement regarding the danger of propylene glycol. The last quote in this article is from him, and it says, Vaping nicotine through e-cigarettes, especially at higher concentrations, is associated with continued vaping and with smoking traditional cigarettes. In this way, e-cigarettes can be the gateway to smoking traditional cigarettes. There is no safe smoking. Do as much research as you want. You will not find any relevant data that associates e-cigarettes as a gateway to traditional tobacco cigarettes. The evidence is simply not there. The data is simply not there. Vaping is not a gateway to traditional tobacco cigarette smoking. There are millions, and I'm not exaggerating, there are millions and millions of people that have stopped using tobacco because of vaping. Smoking rates right now are at an all-time low, and the United Kingdom is wholeheartedly embracing vaping as a form of tobacco harm reduction. And as much as we want to focus on this one instance in Pennsylvania, this one girl who developed this mysterious wet lung through hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which again is an allergy to organic dust. As much as the media wants to focus on that, let's focus on something else. Let's focus on the fact that millions, millions of people have used vaping to stop traditional tobacco cigarettes and that traditional tobacco cigarettes when used properly cause upwards of 400,000 deaths in the United States every year. 480,000 deaths because of cigarette smoke. And CNN and CBS want you to focus on this one girl who had one allergic adverse reaction to something that may or may not have even been vaping related. Vaping is going to change the world. If you're out there, please be a critical person. Don't just read a headline on an article and believe it as the Bible truth. Look into it, research it, see what these doctors are saying, see what other doctors are saying, see what the Royal College of Physicians, the largest and most respected group of doctors on earth is saying about vapor products. And any opinions or feedback you have, I'd love to get them down in the comments below. And where I'm gonna leave this right now is a quote from Dr. Konstantinos Farsalinos. He is a cardiologist out of Greece. Here's what he had to say about it. This was a case report of hypersensitivity pneumonitis, most commonly an allergic reaction that causes inflammation in the lung. The inflammation which could be caused by pneumonia, bacteria, and more results in pleural effusion. The authors of the study only suggested that vaping caused hypersensitivity pneumonitis, providing absolutely no scientific data to back this theory except mentioning that the girl vaped. The use of the term wet lung is a deliberate attack on vaping and an attempt to fearmonger and spread misinformation once again, forcing smokers away from using this product to quit smoking. In every anti-vaping article I have ever read or ever run across, I always think it's so ironic that they're focusing on this one instance and the instances of injury or disease from vaping are so far and few between that they get focused on like a laser beam 
the whole time, ignoring the fact that cigarettes are still legal to purchase across the United States because of that nice tax money and are responsible for over 400,000 deaths every year. We are getting attacked left and right, up and down, top to bottom from the news media, from politicians, from state and local governments, from doctors, from all of these people that are supposed to be helping and supporting public health. And by demonizing a product that is at least 95% healthier for you than traditional tobacco cigarettes, I think they are doing a great disservice to public health and they are keeping smokers smoking. And I'm gonna leave that right there before I get too fired up and get a little bit too ranty. As always, leave any comments or opinions down in the comment section below, but that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, 95% healthier for you. Let's keep on vaping.